Alright everybody, welcome back. I uh, was just falling asleep all over myself a few minutes ago. Ended up taking an unintentional nap. So, we're back again, and um, this lesson, or well, half a lesson, is going to go over how to make the assignment that I showed you last time. Um, we're going to start off kind of similarly to how we normally start off. Um, with any program, and we're going to handle, you know, making uh, an overall loop and getting out of the loop first. So we're going to do something simple. We're going to make an int and call it a... Well, this is one of those ones where I like to make it so uh, we can break out at a sort of menu in the program. So I'm going to call it choice. Um, and then I'm just going to make a double and call it x and y. So okay, those are going to be our sort of uh, menu options for the entire program. Um, we're probably going to come back and revisit a program sort of like this later as well, just to warn you. So we're going to start with a C out, and this is going to be all of our menu options. And I'm going to break them on different lines, which you don't need to per se, but I will anyways. Um, since the program can run multiple times, every option needs to kind of be on its own line, because if it hits the bottom and it comes back to the top, it would technically be on the same line if I didn't have this. And stylistically, that's not what we want. So we're going to say... Um, we can say welcome to calculator. In case you haven't noticed this by now, I suck at typing and talking at the same time. Um, press 1 to add. And then we're going to uh, break to a new line with an end L. Press 2 to subtract. I'm going to do another end L. Um, press 3 to multiply, and we'll do an end L up here, and then we can come down to the next line and we can do it like that. I don't like doing that. I like to end a C out on a line, and I would just rather have multiple C out statements. Um, for some reason, it feels kind of sloppy for me not to do so. Again, this is just another personal style thing. You don't have to do that if you don't want. Um, since I used an end L up here, I'm going to, uh, down here, just continue as normal. And say press 4 to divide. Um, press 5. No, we're going to end L. I forgot breaking my own sort of sort of a design scheme here. Okay, and uh, press 5 to find the modulo. And modulo is really just the remainder. Um, I haven't really talked about that because it doesn't feel too important to me in C++. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do with modulo, um, and I suppose we'll get into that a little. And we'll just say press 6 to raise to a power. Oh, and I forgot an endel. And so then we're going to an endel. On the last line we'll say Press negative 9 to quit. And so now we we kind of have this sort of a uh, this sort of statement that allows us to do sort of what we want. And I think that is kind of nice. We'll just do an end L and say make your choice. Uh, I'm gonna make that into a new statement. I don't want it going off the edge of my page. Okay, and we'll say, say, see out. Make 
your choice. And then we're going to C in for our aptly named variable of choice. Um, we're going to kind of scroll back over here. All right, so that means that we're going to come up top here and write a while loop before that, because now that we know, okay, negative nine is going to be our quit. So we're going to say while uh, choice is not equal to negative nine. We're just going to initialize it to zero, just to make sure that it works out all right. And so we're going to come down to the end of this loop. And so, um, at the end, we'll say C out to quit, press negative nine. I know that's a little contrived. Um, and then we'll say press any other, eh, okay, well, actually what we'll do here is we'll just do a, uh, I didn't think over exactly how I wanted to quit yet. We can do it at the end, or we can just do it a different way. Either one's fine. So I'll continue on and I'll kind of figure that out along the way. Okay, so we need to handle these cases, and what we're going to do here is actually going to be a, um, a, a complex if statement. You could use cases, I showed you how to use them just a tiny bit in a previous episode, but I don't want to really get into the, the topic that openly quite yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our, ourselves six if statements. And I just need to include CMath up here, because that's what we're going to need to uh, raise to a power. Alright, so, well, actually, before we do anything, we're going to uh, have to see out and ask for our two numbers. So we're going to say C out, enter number 1. And we're going to see in for X. And C out. Enter number two. Um, each of these is going to need backslash n, so it starts on a new line. And c in for y. And now we're going to say if choice equals one, and we're just going to copy paste this um, for time's sake. We're going to do that uh, as many times as we have options. So in this case, it looks like six. So we'll say two, three, four, five, and that one just didn't really look the way I liked it to, but that's okay. I can realign it. Okay, and then we're going to just change these as we go down to two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and we're actually going to put uh, if choice is negative 9 above all this, it's just going to break. So we're just going to do like that. And so that ought to work. Okay, so all we're going to do then is choice number 1 was a uh, addition. So we're going to take a... we'll take a third variable, why not? We'll, uh, we'll call it z, and z is just going to be our variable to hold whatever the outcome of x plus x minus y, whatever is. So we'll, um, we'll initialize it to zero, because that might squabble at us if we don't, um, because it's possible to uninitialize it. So, okay, we're going to uh, let's see, 1 is add, so that's going to be z equals x plus y, and then we're going to see out x plus um, y equals, and then we're just going to put z. 
and then we're going to end L. And that's going to be the basic idea, these two lines for each of these. So then we have to do it for subtraction. And all we really need to change then is um, this is going to be a minus instead of a plus. That's going to be a minus. And let's see, number three is going to be multiply. Same basic idea. I'm just going to do a multiply. Another multiply. Uh, then four was divide mod and raise to a power. Okay, so we're going to uh, divide on this one. And then this one's going to be a uh, mod, which is just going to be a percent. And then 6 is going to be raised to a power, which is going to be... This one, you will have the opportunity to put in two numbers that are way too big, and that might crash the program. Like, I mean, if you put in, you know, 104 raised to the 749th power, it's going to crash. Um, because that's too big to fit in there. Um, so we're just going to do x comma y. I'm not sure if I can use uh, double as y there. Um, if I use a decimal, that might crash it. Um, and we're just going to change that to a caret. And I think that should just about do it by my specifications. Um, oh, I didn't even need to do mod. Who knew? Okay, yep. And, oh, I can't use double and double, um, so I'm going to have to cast this to an int. Oh, wrong, wrong way to cast. Um, there is uh, a certain way to do this that I'm not going to get into, um, where you can uh, perform mod on a floating point number. It's called fmodf. And it's part of the CMath library. I'm not going to get into that right now, though. So, okay. And then we're going to put each of these in parentheses. Just to be sure that we're getting the results that we want. Okay. And let's hope that that works. Okay. And here's our program. We're going to, um... We're going to just try raising to a, a power here. And we'll hit a uh, 6 for that. And enter number 1, we'll say 12, and we're going to raise to the third power. Um, as you can see, it spits out our menu at us right after, but it equals 1728, which sounds about right. Um, 144 times 12. Yeah, it's good. Okay, and we're just going to check to see that the negative 9 quits us. It worked out wonderfully. So, that's about... Uh, yeah, unfortunately it took me about 13 and a half minutes to explain all that. But that's going to be how we use a, a series of if statements and not use basically any else's um, to kind of accomplish uh, a task. On a future chapter where I go ahead and explain out case logic, which is going to be very soon, I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to show you how to do this with cases and I think that it's going to be a little bit easier for you guys. Alright, well, that's going to be it for this lesson. Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in. If you guys solve this an alternative way, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Every single C++ program can be made a hundred different ways. And if you made it some way that doesn't necessarily correspond with this and it works, show me. And, you know, there might be some areas that I, I can show you where to improve, there might be some areas that, um, you know, you might be able to do even better. Or you might have done it even better than me. Who knows? So for now, um, that's going to do it for this lesson. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good night.